Okay, so we're getting pretty close to being done now. Um, just a few more layers of flyaways to do. Um, looking at using these final three cards. So this is um, the bit that's kind of really going to push and properly polish um, the hair. You could leave it at this if you really wanted to. And I am always tempted to every hair I make. But I think adding the extra really fine flyaways just, you know, pushes it. Uh, if you look at any reference, you know, there's there's big big ones, but there's all these messy, tiny fine hairs, um, and it's it's absolutely worth adding them in. Um, maybe if the hair was for like, you know, for example, an NPC that you're never really going to see up close. Maybe it's not worth adding this, you know, adding these extra tries because you're not going to see them, but for, you know, personal work or main character or, you know, cast character, whatever, definitely worth doing. So um, I've got a couple of techniques that kind of speed this up. However, I've kind of shot myself in the foot because this style um, has lots of layers. So usually um, I could put one long curve going all the way down and then duplicate that across the hair, randomize it and actually have a nice amount of, you know, wobbly curves, flyaways um, that are just easily randomly generated. But um, because this has got layers, obviously I can't have one long strand going from the top to the bottom because that's not how the hair's cut. All those strands would be down underneath. That you can't really see so I'm gonna to have to go through and kind of give it at least like three layers of um, flyaways but we'll still use that technique and it'll still be valid which is going to be a lot more time consuming but as I mentioned um, we can easily generate this and randomize it and make it a lot quicker so I'll start with this one here um, and then duplicate and just transfer the UVs over to this one later. Um, with this card though, we're going to have to be careful, we're going to have to be, not careful, a little bit more deliberate in how we place it because we can't totally randomise it because then it would be following unnatural directions and it, all the strands would be following that shape and it would look strange. So yeah, just bear that in mind. So same as last time, I recommend just checking your your angles and starting from the front and then working your way around. So here I'm really looking for any gaps that I've missed, anything that looks a bit too boring. So here, here we've got a bit of space and that'll look so much better when it's just got a little bit of fly away coming out here. Uh, same down here. It's like, you know, again, if you look at the reference, you'll never see hair so well you're maybe in some circumstances but re generally rarely you won't see hair so clean and smooth and devoid of flyaways so with this one i'm just i'm hoping to make it um you know serve a little bit of a different function to these ones here I've got um you know just to make it worth worth the card worth the effort of putting it in um so I'm just gonna experiment with you know changing how it looks so I can get a nice silhouette The thing that I found with flyaways is that, you know, as I said, it's not worth putting them on for the sake of it. Um, if you're going to put them on, make sure they really serve your 
your hairstyle a purpose make sure you know they're worth that geometry because otherwise you know if you're just layering them up on top and not really considering what they're doing it's just it's just wasted tries and with hair you know it takes so much tries anyway you want to be smart about what you're putting on And as always, I've got my reference on the my other screen just for inspiration and stuff. Little ideas of how I can place them. Right, so next I'm going to try this uh, cheat, I suppose, for my flyaways, with these like super, super thinner ones. Um, so what I'm going to do is select some curves that I've previously put down and that kind of have good coverage all over the head. I'm going to duplicate those, stick them in another layer, and then uh, yeah, just gonna select those curves. Yeah. Um. 
like that one first, then these ones. Transfer the UVs. And now these are all flyaway textures. And then I'm going to go into randomize and then fiddle with these settings. So when I enable, I want to lock the first CV, so the root of it, and then turn these on. Okay, so we're just going to do this first. Turn that off a bit. Turn modify. And then, obviously, this is very extreme. But what this will do is randomize all this. So I'm going to edit this in a bit, but for visibility, let me change the color again, sorry. So this will give us nice randomized flyaways um, without having to put them all in by hand. Um, and because these are just literally one or two hairs, we don't have to be so considerate of the direction they're going in. Now we will want to go in and just tweak this a little bit and make sure we've got nothing crazy going on. But this just gives us a really quick, easy base to work with that will be so tedious to put in by hand. I may also change some of these to my single hair UV like that, just because two hairs go in exactly the same direction like that looks a bit weird. Like, you know, they're really subtle, but I think they make all the difference. And also with that last step, how easy it was to just do that and add those. It's a no-brainer, really. Got a couple of sharp bits of geometry, which we will fix. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to do some minor polish, minor tweaks, but yeah, that is generally my hair process. I'm also going to just tweak really quickly the width of these because usually I let the flyaways be a little bit thicker than they should be because you want to be able to see them. Um, but 
obviously you don't want to have these odd wiry hairs sticking out so 